me that this was, I think it's Victor told me this is the increment function. This is a function, right? Add one is a function of one parameter that expects a number and adds one to it. So add one, just so we're clear on this, is identical to this lambda expression. That performs the add one operation. It's a function of one parameter that adds one to it. Um, OK, so here we go. We're going to go ahead and evaluate this. We dive in. Items are not null. It's the whole list, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're going to evaluate a con statement. Now, here is the higher order functions. We passed func in as a procedure. So func is, gets, func gets bound to add one in this particular instance. So when we, when we evaluate func, it says, oh, that's add one. And then it applies it to car of items. Items is the list one, two, three, four. Car. So basically what we get is add one of the car of that list, which is one, which becomes a two immediately. There's no like delay. That's like, OK, add one of one is two. And then we've got the recursive call. So we're consing two to, we're going to call ourselves list proc one. We'll, hit, we'll um, carry add one through to the next call. And then cutter of items is the list two, three, four. So it's consing to, to the result of doing the rest. Let's do the rest. I'm, I'm going to, instead of writing it all out, I'll just we're going to do a replacement for this expression. So that's going to be cons. I mean, just carrying this logic forward. We're going to add 1 to 2 and get a 3. And I'm going to abbreviate the recursive call as LP1 of add 1. And the remainder of the list is 3, 4. Yeah, thank you. Um, close that one. So it's the, cl it's the classic recursion. So we get cons 2 to con 3 to cons 4 to cons 5, finally to empty list. And then it unwinds, and it spits out the list at the end, 2, 3, 4, 5. People good with that? So how's, here's my next question. Do this same, use, all right. So list proc one has a name. It's called map. All right. The Dora Explorer song just entered my head, but I can't sing. So you just have to imagine the Dora the Explorer, the map character. All right, what does map do? Map takes a function and applies it to each item in the list, producing a new list with each of those transformed items. So map is the generalized version of scale list. It's like a generalized, full, it's a generalized scale list. Yeah. It does it recursively. That's the way it's supposed to work. Um, it's order n in, in time. It's order n in space. It's the whole delayed recursion story. That's fine. Um, but now you can transform any list by taking each item, changing it to a new list. So for example, you could do the scale list. You could define scale list. Here's where it starts to get fun. So we had scale list took a list of items and a factor. Now we can, and map is also a built-in. It's, it's pretty much implemented like I just wrote it out. So you can map a function over those items. And here we go. We're going to make a function which is a lambda expression over its input, which multiplies its input by the factor. This factor becomes that one. We're, we're going to look next week. We're going to go into the whole um, 
environment model that explains exactly how that happens. But lexically, you can see that that makes sense. If this is, um, this is a concrete number at the point where this lambda is evaluated. The point where this lambda function is created, that's just a number that we handed in, like 10. And then we bundle that 10 inside of the lambda expression that says, take a number multiplied by 10. Um, and then we just map that function over our list of items. So that's how you would write scale lists now that you know map exists. So you could do all sorts of mappings. Um, okay, 